this day on, from this day on, I choose you, I choose you to be my beloved soulmate. To be my beloved soulmate. To live with you, to live with you, and laugh with you, and laugh with you. To stand by your side, to stand by your side, and sleep in your arms. Rusnara Nozir Ahmad lives with a toddler son in a rented room. She was married at the age of 11 to a man who bought her from a trafficker. She had no knowledge of sex, but that did not stop her husband from forcing himself on her. He then abandoned her when she fell pregnant five months after the marriage. <laughs> Rusnara's parents died when she was seven years old. She is an illiterate and does not have any skills. She is now 14 years old, has no job and lives at the mercy of her neighbours who have allowed her to stay and eat for free. Some of her relatives help out with her son's expenses. Rusnara's house is in the suburbs of Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia's federal capital, which is home to many other Rohingya refugees such as her. And there are dozens of child brides in that small area. Sharifa Shakira, a refugee rights activist and a Rohingya herself, says many girls were sold into marriage by traffickers following an escalation of violence against the minority Muslim community by the Burmese military in 2012. These girls had no choice but to flee Burma by undertaking a perilous sea journey at the mercy of the traffickers, who demand a payment of up to 2,000 US dollars. What uh, the Rohingya thinks in Malaysia that if they bring their girls from Myanmar, if they bring their family from Burma, it means they are safe in Malaysia. So in that kind of concept, they think that they are saving a girl's life. And they trust these traffickers because they have no way not to trust them because the only way they can come to Malaysia is by trafficker. The person who buy the girls doesn't know what happened to her while she is living, I mean, staying I mean, in hands of trafficker in the camp. They just thought that, oh, nothing happened. And she was forced to say that nothing happened because if she said, I've been raped by the traffickers, and then the men, of course, some of them won't buy. The targeted persecution against the Rohingya Muslims dates back to the World War II, where the Rohingya declared their loyalty to the British, while the Rakhine Buddhists threw their support behind the Japanese. The discrimination against the Rohingya did not stop even after the formation of Burma in 1948. The Rohingya are not allowed to own land or properties, are forced to fill up tediously long forms to get married, and need a special permit to travel from one province to the other. 
a revamp of the citizenship law made them stateless in 1982. Many have hardly been to school due to the ongoing persecution. Hundreds of thousands of Rohingya live in overcrowded, internally displaced people's camps in Sitwe, which lack basic sanitation and clean drinking water. The escalation of violence in June 2012 saw thousands of Rohingya flee into Malaysia, and many parents sent their daughters with traffickers, believing that's the safer option. And after the riot, of course, most of them will end up in an IDP camp, internally, you know, displaced people camp. So because the situations are not getting better and they have no future, and it's easy, you know, to persuade them, to approach them. So the agents approach them, promising them, you had a better life in Malaysia, let's come. You don't have to pay any money. So they can have a lot of people in the same boat. So they bring them to the Thailand, and then from Thailand, they sold them to the men or maybe they sold them to, you know, child slavery and sex slave. Many girls also fled their homes to escape rape and sexual abuse at the hands of the Burmese military, only to be tortured and sold into marriages by traffickers. Just like Rusnara, Norbibi Mohammed Harun fled her home in Mongdo when the military invaded her village. She was only 15 years old. Her mother was killed in the violence. So were nine out of her 13 siblings. She too had no money to pay the traffickers, who then locked her up in a camp in Thailand in the hope of selling her off to a Rohingya man for marriage. It's, it's a very, very complex problem. Some of it is driven by poverty. Uh, poverty of the men uh, seeking brides who can help them in the economy of the family and the children uh, of, of those marriages uh, are important in the longer term stability and future of the families to raise income for themselves. So uh, it's a very profound problem to try and address. It has to start with the education of the communities. It has to start with the families themselves and to find alternatives that are not based on exploitative practices of the girl child. Another violent episode in Burma led to the Rohingya boat crisis in 2015. And growing violence saw close to 80,000 people flee Burma for neighboring Bangladesh in October 2016. Roima Yunus was only 11 when she fled her hometown, Butidong, just before 2015. She was alone and followed the people from her village to Bangladesh. Upon reaching Bangladesh, many amongst the group made plans to get to Malaysia. Roima decided to join them and lied to the trafficker that she had money to pay for the trip. <laughs> Malaysia, 
इतना रह गया ना उसी ताकि इतना रह रह जाए के दूर रह जाए के दिन रह के दूर दिन रह के बाद में त्यान दी दूर इतना रह सुरा कलाई तां रातु जब तक किए ना इतना दो या ना इतना रातु बिशी ताका हो जी तो माने बिगिन्दा ये शहरा सरिगोना सरिगोमा या हुआ शिला Her nightmare began when she got to Thailand. तब मैं वाली नरे माने आरा जब तक सुरा या ना होले आरा बिशी मारा दोरा गुजी बेजी दी गुजी मतलब मोटर हंदला गुजी दी बी दे हुए आरा मातू तो होने वाले बाद है तो आना तो ठीक है दीवी हल्ले ठीक है दीवी बोले हो यस ठीक है ना तो बहुत जेगल ठीक है ना तो और इन दिला हो तो आना ठीक है ना वो आना आना तो मिल जाए हम हो सही दे आना होने दिला तो ठीक है दीवी में दिला होले ऐसे जन लोग जादे तेरे दूते जनता के दूते जनता के तेरे किस्से वाला � दिन वाले तो आरा दिन दिला कुछ जुन्दो वो दिला वो है ना रे की रागे बात इधर आ माने आरा रो तो तो होले तो आरा तो मारी वाला ही मुनी क्यों रे ओ तो मदर लो जाए रे रुगी From an innocent child, she became a sex slave, raped by some sixty traffickers, while held captive in a camp in Thailand. आरा लाऊ ली तेरा बेगुनों तो बहुत आगाव रहने के हम बाई पौनो वाम होता रा लिए शी और � ऐड रखी बाद ऐड यो माने आरा रो तो बेजी थी माय हूँ माने भी कुंगी योगो आरा बे साज जुनो उदासी तो आरा बेशी बेजी थी और तो ऐड यो गोरे हिंग लग गोते होते हैं आप तो जुलुंगो जी तो जुलुंगो री बाद इन दिला तो तो बेशी गोरे हिंग आम तो बोला शाम वहीं दाना आरा नसीनी दुमाश पोना शील दुमाश बिया ना उड़वा लगे माने पुआ करो तो ओली बाई होंडा लालर हो तो ये दिन आ किस्सो होने वाली तो गियो को ही बाला रहते रोइमा वास इवेंटुअली सोल्ड ऑफ टू अ रोहिंग्या मैन वो आल्सो एंडेड अप अब्यूसिंग हर तो जमाने नून दिल में क्या दिया शारा का बाला ना हाथ और ना हाथ तो नहीं ना माइटर को रे हो सरा इन दिलाज जरूर में कोई गुलाब वो गाये पाते जुड़ी ना भारी दहेज़ चीज़ है यह आज जमाने आरे माने आज तो सारा जुलुम बुरे हो गया ना लोगों ने आये पाते जुड़ी ना भारी दिया ना लोगों ने आये दहेज़ चीज़ है रोइमा इस नाउ 14 इयर्स ओल्ड एंड करेंटली स्टेज विद द फैमिली ऑफ रोहिंग्या रेफ्यूजी she has never been to school and has no skills. She lives in fear that her husband would one day find her and sexually exploit her for money. According to non-governmental organizations and refugee rights activists, the sea route from Burma to Malaysia via Thailand has been closed due to stringent enforcement following the boat crisis. But an interview with a trafficker revealed that the new channel for trafficking these young girls is from Bangladesh to Malaysia. We met the trafficker in an undisclosed location in Kuala Lumpur. He is married and has children. He agreed to speak to us anonymously. Feeling no little bit dumb. Another one. Another one. So Bangla, I said Bangla fast food. Then I go. Yes. Bangla is fast food. Nalo le. Yes. Feeling it will do. It are I go move thi. Yes. It are I ask the general. It are I no no do no no no. Yes. The column for error to do. Yes. Do. Yes. Error to no bishop. So bishop my team. Turn over team. How are you? Yes. Nalo le ani go. And there are many Rohingya men here who commissioned the services of these traffickers to buy themselves a child bride. Abdul Hashim is one of them. Jadi baru mara air hoja, oya matur hoja, oya matur ada bau. Pulau mari balai, mara mari balai, bayi mari balai. Tapi ada suruh jodoh dah si. Ada yang jamlah tapi lebih lebih ada. Ada zaman lah, kata orang orang dah si. Dia dah baru lah, dia dah sedulur tak si dia tu dulu tera air. Tiada zaman kau ni hari ini dia pun hamari ni lah, hana. Mara dah kemar bayan duka tapi mara tu ramai dia mara kapula dah kau ni tiada lagi. He is 26 years old and works very hard every day collecting scrap metals to sell in order to save 2,000 US dollars to pay the traffickers. He wants to get married next year and wants a child bride from his village in Butidong. 
Abdullah says he doesn't want to marry any girl who is already in Malaysia as she has been exposed to a different culture and would not obey him. Muhammad Yassin is 23 years old and has a baby girl. He came to Malaysia four years ago, fleeing violence in Sitwe. Muhammad says he bought his 14-year-old bride for 7,000 ringgit. She is now 16 years old. He wanted a wife who would not just obey him, but is also from his village. But Norbibi's husband, Nor Islam, says he managed to buy his bride for a way cheaper price. The traffickers were willing to let her go because they were fed up of waiting. The United Nations predicts that 140 million girls will become child brides between 2011 and 2020. This is more than 14 million girls a year or 39,000 every day. Out of these, 50 million will be under the age of 15. While Bangladesh has the highest number of girls marrying before the age of 18 in Asia, it's tough to gauge the number of Rohingya girls who are victims of child marriages. Besides the horrors of trafficking and being sold off into marriages, marrying off their young daughters is a culturally entrenched practice amongst the Rohingya making child protection impossible. We spoke to Richard Toll, head of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees in his Kuala Lumpur office. He says that the UNHCR's estimate of 230 child brides amongst the refugee communities in Malaysia is a tip of the iceberg. That's the challenge. How do we keep young girls in school longer? Uh, how do we prevent them without fundamentally violating traditional practices of the communities, how do we keep them safe for longer periods of time so that they can take informed voluntary decisions when they're ready. And certainly a girl of 11 and 12 has no power to make any kind of informed decisions about marriage. The Rohingya community is patriarchal with a feudal mindset. Having worked with them for over 11 years, it's clear to me that there is no avenue or support for a woman to take up leadership roles in the society. But if you ask me, religion never say that put your wife in the house forever, you know. 
So we are allowed to go out with covered, with, with hijab, with the dignity, to work, to study, to help the family. This is the root cause. And there is much, you know, less respect for the women than the men. And the view on the girls and women is completely different, you know, the value, everything is different. So we have to attack and, you know, completely stop this gender stereotyping root cause from our, you know, ground level. And we have to change it. Patriarchy is not just exclusive to the Rohingya community and may have been a result of the security and survival issues faced for decades in Burma. But women who dare take up leadership roles like Sharifa Shakira and Hafsa Tamisuddin even receive threats for trying to empower other women with education and skills training. When I came to speak up about my own community, men didn't like mostly because maybe they might feel as a challenging or maybe they might see as a threat, but I'm not. I am a combined force for them. I wanted them to understand that. If they let the women come forward together with the men, I would like to see how beautifully our community will develop in future. So it has been challenging still today, but I will not stop it. We spoke at length with Hafsa about the discrimination she faced growing up in Arakan. And it's the time to change it. Since in my country, you know, since the time when my parents were sending me to school, there were a lot of, you know, negative comments about me. Okay, your daughter is going to end up being a prostitute. Why? They don't feel women at the same level as men. So this is the thing. Also, in, uh, back in Burma, in some township, they see the daughters as the burden of the family. If the family is struggling financially, if they have three daughters and three boys, they will send the boys to school or maybe to work. But for the daughters, when they become 13 and 14, they just give away. Give away means they just, you know, force them to get married. So it's a kind of reducing their burden. So if they raise their kids, their daughters, not as the burden of the family, but as a force of a family, it wouldn't happen in this way. There are easily half a million refugees here, out of which 150,000 are Rohingya Muslims. But it's not a conducive environment for refugees as Malaysia has not ratified the UN Refugee Convention and therefore does not recognize the rights of refugees. This severely restricts their access to work, education, basic needs and medicine. But the Malaysian government is currently working at putting in place a mechanism to register 1,000 Rohingya, an effort that would allow them a legal status for a year. The access to the normal facilities that ordinary people would have is not really there for refugees and that creates an even more exposed environment for them because the, the numbers of NGOs and civil society actors and UN working together is very, very small. Our combined capacities to deal with this problem are very, very limited and inadequate. So we need to develop a multi-pronged approach to this. We need support from government. We need government support. We need civil society engagement in this problem. We need education in the schools. And we also need cooperation from the communities themselves. Access to education and work are important, according to UNHCR Chief Toll, in tackling child marriages amongst the Rohingya. That by allowing girls to be stronger in schools, to be better educated, to have better access to safer employment, is far more in their interests on the long term than putting these young girls into uh, often indentured labour through marriage and early childhood, that's early childbirth, which condemns them and the communities and their societies to a certain level uh, of socio-economic deprivation. So how to educate and free up not just the girls but the communities themselves to see things differently. It's very difficult because the power relationships of refugees are very weak and within the refugee communities, the power relationships of the girl child are even weaker. And that's the challenge. How do we get to the girls and get to the families and provide a different pathway for them? But for now, the solution is far from possible. Uh, so I would say that our work really is a band-aid over a much deeper problem that can only be solved if we have more resources and more collective engagement from uh, civil society, NGOs and the government here in Malaysia and, and in the region. It's, it's, it's a regional problem as much as it is a national problem. 
আমি চিয়ান লালে রাজি নই বল মানে আজের পর লাইতে দিন দি বছর মানে গরি তো দে মোহাম্মদ ইন্দ লালে ইন্দ লালে দিন বল আই টিয়া বুসা লালে মানে মানে আই টিয়া লাই ন মানে আই গো মানে গম কে মানে ফোন বলে আজের পর দই আজের পর আমাকে জামাত দে ফলা পরিবর্তন দে ফলা ইমা দে রিয়েলি রিয়েলি ওয়ান্ট টু এসকেপ ফ্রম দিস লাইফ দে হেট ইট দে ডোন্ট লাইক ইট দে রিয়েলি রিয়েলি ওয়ান্ট টু এসকেপ ফ্রম দিস লাইফ দে ওয়ান্ট টু কাম আউট তে বিশে অশান্তি লাগে আই বিশে তো ফেলা তে ইতার আরে আরে রে কেনি লয় হলে আরে ইতারে কেন ইতার আরে কেন গরো হবে যো তে আলা তারা আরে তারে দিয়ে তারে বো হরে দাই মাটি তো হনি কেন আই আদা নারালিয়া তাবরি বা আদা লালিয়া তাবরি বো মানে আর দালাল করে হন দিলা গজি দাই তোমার মানে এত হইবালা রাসা নাই বো ই হলে আই মানে বাত কেন মারি আই তো হম মরদাই তো গমন হবো 